It's the Sin Sports Side Podcast, exclusively on 1045theteam.com. Welcome into the Sit and Sports Side Podcast. I am Mike James, and my co-host is Eric Hanman, and we are joined on the phone by Steve Heitner, a.k.a. Kenny Banya from Seinfeld, along with Greg Peterson, who is his um, podcast producer. And what's the name of the podcast again, guys? That's gold That's with Steve Heitner. We, 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 I decided if people are going to scream it at me all day, I'm going <laughs> to try and do something with it. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, podcast. What is, uh, what's the basis on it? What do you guys talk about? And we'll let you plug it a little bit here when we start off the show. Okay, well, look, we got a, we got a sports aspect to it. It's sports gambling, you know? Yep. We like the idea of, you know, everybody's allowed to, not everybody yet, but they're going to be allowed to gamble in their own state. So believe it or not, there's a lot of people who didn't want to break the law. They're just getting into it now. So we talk about some sports gambling. And then also it's about being a, I don't know, men of a certain age. I mean, the way I say it is, at my age, if you're in a, full, in a photo and you're not surrounded by your wife and your children and your grandchildren, you're creepy. <laughs> so I think that's completely unfair. So we talk about, you know, living a, a decent guy's life and living a good life and what are the good cigars, what's the great tequila, which is uh, all stuff we love, you know, travel, all that kind of stuff. So we do some sports, we do a lot of travel, and we try and laugh it up. Greg, you got anything to add to that? It's exactly what Steve was talking about. Mm -hmm. I provide a little bit more of the sports betting stuff. I'm a guy that lives out in Vegas. I'm based out here, so I'm around the numbers all day. I take a little bit more of an analytical approach. Steve, a little bit more, likes to play his team. He likes to back the Knicks whenever possible, the New York Giants, all those teams, and then there's me betting the, as he likes to call them, empty parking lot games between, like, Charlotte and Davidson or the big Al- Albany versus Vermont game is one that I'll probably be betting when the America East Conference play starts getting rolling. See, it's, uh, yeah. it's, I'm glad you said that because we're actually the home for the Great Danes basketball, so. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, here's the thing is, I, the interesting thing about the betting is that everybody's got a story, right? There's nine million games you can bet on. So which ones do you decide to bet on? Oddly enough, uh, young sensei, as I like to call him, bets on all of them. So I don't, I, don't know how, I don't know how the hell you do that. But for me, it's always about, you know, why do you like the game? Why did, why did you like the Knicks against Detroit? You know why? So to me, it's all about the story. And if you know anything about podcasts, they're all about storytelling anyway, because uh, there ain't no pictures. That's right. All right. So, Greg, I'm going to ask you a crazy question here. You ready? You, you sitting down oh, for yeah, this? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. All right. What are the chances my New York Jets can make the Super Bowl this year? Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> you don't have to be Jets sitting down for that. are not making the Super Bowl. I mean, this team is going to be lucky just to cover a couple games at this point. When I saw them against the Buffalo Bills a couple weeks ago, I knew this team was toast. I knew they were. I just I just figured I'd make a smart comment on that one. Well, are you having a new quarterback? <laughs> I, can, we get, can I get a new quarterback before we actually talk about making the Super Bowl anytime soon? Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't that great. I mean, he, you know, look, they are what they are sometimes, and that guy throws interceptions. I'm not. I've never. I, I will tell you right now. I've never not a Sam Darnold fan. Not only am I not a Sam Darnold fan, I cannot stand USC quarterbacks in the NFL. I I agree with you completely. I I, I thought you know, look. <laughs> I said we're stopping the podcast right now. This is the winning podcast right here. <laughs> right here, absolutely. Come way ahead, yeah. Oh, absolutely. But, uh, look, I would have gone with uh, the Cleveland Browns actually made a good choice, I thought. You know, hey, here's a guy who throws accurate and, and is a walk-on and wins, you know, groupies. I mean, uh, how about that guy? You're my hero. I'm an Oklahoma fan. You are absolutely my hero. Did you, like, stalk <laughs> my page or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, did, I did my research. I, I, got, I got my guys picking your lock and taking your car right now. <laughs> Uh-oh. That, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, that's not too bad. All right, see, see, we did a little our research as well. We know you're a big Giants fan, right? So, yes, sir. So, I would like to know. Let, let us know here in the Capital Region. How would you like to see the e- Eli Manning's tenure in in New York end? Well, first of all, yeah, I want to start by saying I'm I'm a huge Eli fan, right? So I've been appreciative of him the whole time. But what I would like to see, you say how I would like to see it end. Mm-hmm. I would just like to see it end. Yeah. So, so the point being, with all due respect to him, I mean, it was a great run and whatnot, but, you know, when you had all those guys coming out at quarterback and you decide Saquon Barkley's going to be one of the great running backs of all time, that still I don't know if you should take him at number two. 
You know, because it's just such a tough spot to be when you needed to start grooming a guy, and all four, you know, four quality guys were sitting there. There's nobody coming out this year, am I right? There's nobody really of great quality. I mean, the right. Ducks. I think I think he's going to stay in another year. Do you? I think the best quarterback this year is not even going to be playing football after next after this year. So I mean, <laughs> right, right, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unfo- um, thanks, oh, gotcha. Oakland, for that one. Thank uh, you. Tyler yeah. Murray. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, you got a one track mind there they, with the Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, I think you you hit Mike James right on the head. He's a big o- Oklahoma guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I want hey, Lincoln you know, Riley to come to the Jets I, too. You know. Can I ask you guys a question? About Absolutely. Albany? Many years ago, many years ago, I was a serious actor. I, uh, I had eight dreams before I became America's clown. <laughs> um, and I, uh, I did theater in Albany at the uh, Market Theater. We started, we were the first regional theater of Albany. I did a show in the Egg. We oh, the started egg, yeah. the Market mm-hmm. Theater. And uh, so I spent a crap load of time up in Albany. Is that theater still existing? I don't know. I know the Egg is still standing. Well, yeah, obviously the Egg. <laughs> The egg is standing, but you, you know, yeah. well, Oklahoma, you've never seen theater in your life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it's crazy. It's crazy. I grew It's crazy. I grew up up here, right? Yeah. Die hard Oklahoma. I love my Sooners because I want to play football for Stoops. And I love <laughs> and I love the Duke Blue Devils for basketball. I you, can't stand you anything play up here. for Stoops? I did years ago. Right. Because you have a big, you really want to lose the big game? Is that, is that oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. All right. All right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but let's, let's not bury this. Uh, you spent a lot of time in Albany, it sounds like. So what, what's your favorite memory about being in Albany? Oh, my God. I was so young at the time. Uh, so I think I was just – I just remember – I remember the egg. I remember they gave us – it was called the Market Theater. I don't know if it's still there or not, but they gave us a, a supermarket in uh, whatever downtown Albany area. And then they, they, it was an old supermarket, and we just turned it into a theater. I just remember those times as, like, just out of high school – uh, you probably can't tell, but I, I never went for higher learning. If, uh, if Although I don't know if Oklahoma really qualifies for going for higher oh, learning. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you better get a glove up here at some point. Oh, I'll you, if I ever come to L.A., you're in trouble. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, But uh, I do remember it being, you know, I was a young guy. I was pursuing acting, and it was an amazing time in my life, man. I was getting to get up on stage and figure it out and see if I really wanted that for my life. Yeah, how's that working out for you? Terrible, huh? You, you know, yeah. <laughs> a lot of big mistakes on the yeah, day. You only got mistakes. to work with Jerry Seinfeld, you know, no <laughs> big deal. No, it's been amazing, great. It's been an amazing ride. I've been very, very fortunate. But I will tell you this, like, because at the point of my life I'm at now, almost every guy and girl that I came up with, they all at one point or another left show business, right? At one point or another, because it's, you know, it takes a lottery to be able to make it through. Uh, but I'll tell you this, of everybody who left the business, not one of them ever regretted it. <laughs> not one <laughs> of them ever said, boy, do I miss pursuing that. You know, they great. all went on to full lives doing something where you can feel like a human being. Not to make a uh, weird comparison here, but it almost sounds like being a Knicks fan. Like, if you left being a Knicks fan right now, you'd be like, <laughs> yeah, I don't miss that. Oh, I know. I am a Knicks fan, man. I am a Knicks fan. It's a living hell. I was listening to the, what was that about the Fizdale and you just keep chomping the tree. Don't worry if it falls down. Yeah, that was Levac and Gaz. Uh, yeah, our, I liking that. Our afternoon drive. Yeah, they're talking about the. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm liking everything about that. You know, it's hard because I lived up in Northern California for a while with my son, and it's hard not to become a Warrior fan, man. Mm. I mean, they're just they're unbelievably good and they're pretty good guys. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Not a fan. Like, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm actually kind of. I don't know. I was watching the the Detroit game last night, and they had won three in a row. The Knicks had before that, and I'm right. liking some of these young players. You know, you know Alonzo Trier looks very impressive, uh, and then they have some of the first round rejects like Noah Vonley and uh, Mario Hazonia. But then you have Kevin Knox. There's a lot of good young talent, Mitchell Robinson. So I, I'm like, they got rid of the big problem though. Mellow. Yeah, well, but here's the thing. Here's the way basketball has gone, pro basketball. Yeah, so they get some interesting guys. That right. might make them win enough games that they'll never get anybody good. The problem <laughs> is that you've got to get somebody to come to you. And Dolan makes it so that nobody's coming, right? Who came? Yeah. Mellow. What a disaster, right? <laughs> Nobody good is coming. Why didn't, at a, at a perfect moment like that, why wouldn't a guy like LeBron want to come to New York? Because of ownership. Mm-hmm. And then Durant now so, available possibly this this summer. It's another opportunity. Yeah. Probably well, you be think blown. he's coming? You think he wants to deal with the with, with no that? Way. No. 
I think, no, I don't think he does. So then got, we're talking about the guys that are on the Knicks. Great, you know, there's a bunch of guys. There's a bunch of guys on the Lakers, but that didn't matter. Now they got LeBron. Now it matters. Greg, you still alive over there? By the way. <laughs> oh, I'm still with you. <laughs> I want to. I want to touch on. Uh, you, you told me you're a big Wisconsin sports guy, huh? Oh yes, I was born and raised in Wisconsin. Spent the first 22 years of my life there, including going to a little D3 university called the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. Uh, Steve, is that more of a college in Oklahoma? I just want a, your opinion on that really quick. Well, is that more of a college in Oklahoma? No, but at least he knows he's bright enough to say it with humility. You are not. <laughs> uh, so, Greg, what's your thoughts on the Packers right now? Are you, you upset or you think it's just kind of a, a swing curve? You think McCarthy's got to go? What do you think? Oh, I am all about firing Mike McCarthy. This guy has rode the coattails of one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. And he's right now living off that Super Bowl that they won several years ago in which the Packers were a six seed in the playoffs, but they made this magical run because they got the best quarterback in the NFL. I mean, week after week after week, Aaron Rodgers puts up amazing numbers, and yet somehow, some way, someone else on the Packers finds a way to screw it up. Mason Crosby misses five kicks one week. Ty Montgomery puts the ball on the ground on a kickoff. It's just someone every week finding a way to – just give Aaron Rodgers the short end of the stick. It is absolutely insane. The Packers just need to move on from Mike McCarthy. I think a trained orangutan could do a little bit better than him <laughs> as a coach. Let me say, I understand. Let me jump in here. I understand Aaron Rodgers is great and all that, but you know that story gets a little bit old at some point. I mean, the game against uh, Brady, he could have won that game. He had every opportunity to play better in that game. He didn't have to play a great game in that game. So. You know, I just don't know if uh, if I'm buying the whole thing that, oh, my God, can you imagine if he had a receiver and a coach? Well, he has receivers and he has a coach. And uh, I just don't know if I'm buying that they're holding him back, the, like the Dan Marino story, part two. Now, Would you I, take Todd Bowles over Mike McCarthy? <laughs> <laughs> I would. Ah. And no. <laughs> You have you have anybody in particular you'd like to see replace Mike McCarthy? How about that one? Uh, for me, it really doesn't matter. Just as long as we get rid of Mike <laughs> McCarthy, I'll be happy. I think of bringing my mom as the head coach. I feel like great hire. Condoleezza Rice. Could what? be could be Condoleezza Rice. Yeah. What about Condoleezza? Yeah. Uh, that might be a little bit outrageous. What I've heard about that, me, Steve, and Rich, all three of us on the podcast, had the exact same reaction. What the heck is this? <laughs> because it's not that woman are qualified. I mean, but I it was interesting that she's against the prevent defense. Coach, that was good to and know. And Condoleezza Rice has no uh, football coaching experience. Get in someone that's actually been around the game. Get in someone that has some experience as like a special teams coordinator or something like that. Because if you have someone that has that prior experience as a special teams coordinator, defensive coordinator, then I'm all for it. Although you must admit, her and her crew were pretty good at getting us in the red zone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you guys are great. I appreciate you guys. So, all right, let's we'll, we'll stop talking sports here for a second. So, Steve, what was it like working with uh, Jerry Seinfeld on Seinfeld? I mean, obviously, you were Kenny Banya, one of the probably, arguably, my, from my opinion, one of the best actors on that show. But that's you know, Thank my you, opinion means nothing. Thank you, sir. You're talking yourself in the food. Um, it was a great experience. Uh, Jerry was an amazing, amazing guy. So not only if, did, if you were a guest, did you have to what, you have a great outing and a great episode, but if he didn't think you were a good person, you weren't coming back because that show was his baby. So he was just, he treated it really like his child. So by the time we were doing it and the, and the people that just kept, kept coming back, like Patrick Warburton, uh, Burton, who played Putty, and, uh, you know, guys like that, not only was everybody good, but everybody was cool. So Jerry just created a scenario where it was so much fun to do. So what, what <laughs> this had my teacher from the class and I were watching a YouTube video of it this morning. What was the right. whole what was the whole basis behind the whole Armani suit and the uh the whole dinner, you know, Jerry owes you dinner for the suit thing. I want to hear the backstory to that because that had me dying this morning. Uh, okay, I got a, I got a little backstory for you on that. The idea was that that actually happened to one of the writers. 
So they came up with this character, but all it said when I when you auditioned for Banya, all it said was the most annoying man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it said. So when you audition, those walls are thinner, are really thin. So whether you want to or not, you can kind of hear the people auditioning before you. So I was listening to it, and they were so so negative. It was like, hey, you owe me. I gave you that suit. You owe me. And I was like, God, that's just that's not funny. That's not going to work. And just because I was hearing that on a dime right before I went in, I said to myself, what if he's annoying because he adores Jerry? So now you look back and you go, yeah, well, that's what the character was. And it was like, no, I went in and I did that. Larry and Jerry were in the room. They fell out of their chairs, loving every bit of it. And then the writers took over with the idea of, oh, he adores Jerry, and this is why he's annoying. And then the <laughs> character just took off. How similar is Larry David to the character he plays on uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm? Very. <laughs> very. Very. And I don't think, you know, I don't think he would deny that. I mean, that's just the world he lives in. Right, I don't, you know. Yeah. I, and the great thing about Larry is that you don't get, because when you watch him on the show, is that every couple of minutes, every couple of seconds, he's funny. Well, in real life, he's like that, but he's not necessarily funny every couple of seconds. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually bizarre. <laughs> I saw. <laughs> I actually things, things get he, like if, those are some serious situations. Like you laugh about it, you hear the da 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 da. Like you laugh, yeah. but then like in real life, like that's got to be awkward. <laughs> it is. That's what I'm saying. In real life, you know, you don't get exactly. You said it better. In real life, you don't get that little sound beep <laughs> <laughs> to let you know it's a funny show. <laughs> So I, I actually I actually took Greg to school on this one, Steve. You'll be proud of me. Oh, I will be. I saw I'm a huge fan of King of Queens. Now I know you only were on what, two episodes of King of Queens? I was on two episodes of King of Queens, but there's something very unique about that. Let me let me see if I remember this right. There was I know there's an episode where the bed broke in the in in the house, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and they went and bought a new bed. Am I correct in remembering that you were the Bed salesman on that episode? Correct, sir. Ah, Correct. I knew it. Uh, Told you, Greg. Done. But can I, I give you another little right bit there, of backstory on that? King of Queens, and I never knew that. Uh, I never knew that Steve was on King of Queens. That's actually one of my favorite shows. I think okay, I've seen well, every episode. Here's something. Here's <laughs> a great little piece of trivia. I also did another episode of it. I did two episodes of King of Queens. Not the same character. Uh, I know the other one was uh, Marcy's husband, Neil, right? No, when huh? um, when she uh, had to get a night job and she was running an office at night, and they were like, she had five people working for her. Oh, and, uh, is that episode? That's night. right. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and again, I played a, I played the most annoying person in the world. It's <laughs> nice they think of me when they need annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so when I had done that one first. And then they called, and my agents were like, oh, King of Queens called. And they go, oh, we're going to do that character again? They said, no, they just want you to do this other guy. I'm like, really? I said, you know, you should call them and make sure they know that I did the show already. And they said, they know. They love you. They want you to come back to do something else. <laughs> what was it like working with Kevin James and Leah Remney? Uh, you know what? I just, when you deal with people that are that, I, I did an episode of uh, Golden Palace, which was not Golden Girls, but it was Golden Palace after... Um, uh, a season after, most of them did it. The point I'm making is when you work with somebody so good, when you work with Betty White and you're doing sitcom acting with Betty White, she's so good you can't believe it, right? And so I would say when you're working with those two, they had their thing down so tight, so good, that if you had, you know, if you had the chops and your game was on, they were happy to bring you in. So I just had a blast with them because they're good, they know it, and they want they want to work with people who are good. Did I also see you're on Two and a Half Men a few times also? Going through his IMDb yeah, that, page, Mike. Yeah, that I do. Yeah, that I do the same character. Whenever anybody needs plastic surgery on uh, Two and a Half Men, I'm the plastic <laughs> surgeon. <laughs> anything else on the IMDb page, Mike, you want to ask? <laughs> I, can't, I can't think of anything else. I think I hit everything I wanted to hit. I hit two. Of, those are two of my favorite shows. So Nice. Yeah. I'm, oh, good God! I did them all, man. I, I, I just friends for God's sake. I did, I, I did them all. I'm quite, I'm quite the whore. The, the thing is, <laughs> this is, there's, there's nothing wrong with being a whore. Just, just be a pricey whore. Nobody wants to be a cheap whore. Be a pricey whore. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up right here. Um, 
Once again, let's just touch on the shout out your podcast where they people can hear it, and if you guys have Twitters, your Twitter handles, anything you guys want to touch on, people can follow you guys at, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, I'll just go. Uh, that's gold with Steve Heitner is our podcast. Get it where you get podcasts: iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all that stuff. My Twitter is at Heitner. Uh, I am thrilled to be making fun of the uh, the great uh, Greg Peterson, who I have named a young sensei. <laughs> Uh, Greg, uh, say your stuff and we'll be out of here. Ah, uh, yes. My Twitter is at GUnit underscore 81. I tweet more than a uh, teenage Taylor Swift fan, so you'll always <laughs> be able to find me on there. And also follow our also follow our podcast at That's Gold Show on both Instagram and Twitter. And we're currently running a little bit of a special giveaway with Festivus coming up. If you <laughs> follow us on Instagram and uh, Twitter and you just Go ahead, like some of our stuff. You'll have a chance to win a five hundred dollar. You'll have a chance to win five hundred dollars and a chance to be a guest with myself and Steve. Can I? Can I just wow. take the five hundred dollars? <laughs> take it, and I'll let you say whatever you want to say about Oklahoma for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> take the five. Take the five hundred. Go get yourself an education. Oh. <laughs> oh, what a pleasure, guys! Thank All you, right, for guys. Thank us. you very much. Thank you, sir.